Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back. And girl, hold up. Did I just wink at y'all? Girl, why did I wink at y'all? What was that about? <laughs> what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back. I'm winking at y'all now. I need me a man over here. I need the comfort of a man. Oh, yes, I need. I need. I need. I need. Okay, I need the comfort of a man. I'm over here winking at girl. And most of y'all women. <laughs> okay. I'm over here winking at y'all. I told y'all I might dip in the lady pond one day. <laughs> Oh my god! Anyways, y'all, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I just wanted to come in and run my mouth and talk about some people. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get into this mess. So, Denny Lays, you know, I can never, I can never, you know, I have a hard time pronouncing people's name. Um, Danny, is it Danny Lee or Danny Lay? <laughs> Anyways, the one who had the song, the one, the one who, the one who was related to Giselle and her daddy. Not really by blood, but by the way they move and the things that come out of their mouths. Okay. Yeah. What is it? Yellow bone, that's what he like. Ain't that how the song goes? Yellow bone, that's what he want. <laughs> Something like that. Yellow bone, that's what he like. Yellow bone, that's what he like. It was something like that, child. Anyway, Danny Lay's brother said he's been having trouble serving the baby. Lawsuit papers over bowling alley beatdown. Wants judge to allow him to put it in the newspaper. So neighbors, apparently the brother of the baby's ex-girlfriend, Danny Lee, has a lawsuit against the baby that's now been delayed after his inability to locate him. According to court documents acquired by Radar Online, Danny Lay's brother, Brandon Bills, requested permission to serve the baby using an alternative manner. Bills requested that he be permitted to issue a notice in a local newspaper. <laughs> I know that's right. They put everything else in the newspaper. I'm informing the baby of the lawsuit rather than presenting him, rather than presenting it to him directly. Danny Lay's brother earlier stated in December 2023 that he hired a private investigator to find and serve the baby. Um, Bill's lawyer stated in his, mo in his most recent motion that they have attempted to serve the baby since July 2023. The process server attempted addresses in North Carolina and, Car and uh, California, but failed each time. A judge has yet to rule. A judge has not yet ruled on Bill's motion. Um, Bill's filed a complaint in February 2022 after an incident with the baby and his pals. Denny Lay's brother was at a Los Angeles bowling alley when the baby appeared. Bill's accused the rapper of delivering the first punch. TMZ uh, reviewed, I'm sorry, received a video of the incident which shows the two battling on the slick bowling lanes. When I tell y'all, baby, they whooped, they, when I say baby, they whooped, <laughs> when I say they whooped up, Girl, when I say they whooped her, girl, they whooped her. When I said she was slipping and sliding all on that floor, girl, it looked like somebody had put some, girl, it like somebody had put some dishwashing liquid on the floor. And girl, they like that was out there. The girl doing that electric slide almost. I said, oh my God. The altercation between Bills and the baby occurred months after Danny Lay and the rapper's bitter split. Danny Lay was charged with Girl, what's, what? Hold up. They say Danny Lay was charged with ASSAULT following an encounter with the rapper in November 2021. Was she? Um, Bills alleged that the baby's conduct caused him physical and psychological harm, uh, forcing him to spend money on medical expenses. You know what's so crazy? I don't remember the full incident, but I do remember me coming down here and not necessarily defending the baby, but I remember... I don't think the bro I remember my stance was basically the brother wasn't all the way innocent. And I don't re and I also remember not believing that the brother was this upstanding guy who just wanted to protect and honor his sister. It was some other mess going. It was some other mess that had happened prior to him, <laughs> girl getting molly whopped all up and through that bowling alley that led me to believe that he wasn't all the way innocent i can't remember 
And quiet as this kept, I really don't care. I'm just coming out, coming down here to give y'all an update on what's going on between the baby and um, Brandon, since we already discussed it. Um, I mean, girl, if it work out for Brandon, it work out. If it don't, then it don't. Anyways, y'all, let's move on. Oh, girl. I need to go. I need to go. <laughs> Girl, my nerves just got bad. I need to go for a walk. That's what I need to do. I like to walk at nighttime. I just feel like, I don't know why I like to walk at nighttime. Well, I do know. Because I can walk downtown. And I think it's so pretty downtown. And especially now, like, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not too, it's not really hot outside. Let me see. Let me check the weather. Right now it's only 72. That's not bad. During the summertime, girl, it'd be like 99 at nighttime. Honey, girl, at that point, it don't matter if you walk, walk during the day or at nighttime. It's all the same to me. Anyway, so let's get into this. Chris Brown seemingly disses Quavo on new 1111 Deluxe album track. Listen, this is according to the Jasmine brand. So early Thursday, April the 11th, Quavo dropped the Deluxe version. Girl. Y'all do not be proofreading. Girl, y'all do not be proofreading. This is what they put. Early Thursday, April the 11th, Quavo dropped the deluxe version of his 1111 album featuring a song called Freak. They meant Chris Brown dropped the deluxe version. In the single, he noticeably named drops Quavo and the Migos rapping, effing my old itches ain't going to ain't gonna make us equal. Sipping that 1942, because I don't do Cuervo. Is it Cuervo? Jose Cuervo? Yeah. Qu Jose Cuervo. Qu Cuervo. Here, y'all know what I'm trying to say. Um, he continues, Freak Itch, Freak B-I-T-C-H, she like Casamigos, not the Migos. It didn't take long for fans to hop on X, formerly Twitter, to share their thoughts on the lyrics. It's not exactly clear what girl Chris Brown was referring to, but back in 2022, Quavo was spotted seemingly on vacation with the Deuces singer ex-girlfriend Karushi Tran. The two also allegedly dated in 2017. Rumors of their romance appeared to be confirmed when Chris Brown's team and Quavo had an altercation at the BET Awards after party that year. Girl. I do not understand what Chris' problem is. Chris has a few, more than a few, screws loose up top. I'm telling y'all that elevator does not go all the way up. It stopped like right here. It's supposed to go right here, but he'll stop right here. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's just weird to me. Girl, it's just weird to me, girl. You're not going to be dramatic, girl. I don't know why I got my eyes closed. It's just weird to me. Chris, why are you still even worried about Karuchi Tran? This is the woman who you A B U S E D'd, allegedly. She also had a five year restraining order out against you. Yeah, you still on the on on the songs, girl. What did he say? Let's go make some beats, girl. You down? You still down to the studio making beats, and girl trying to rehash some beef with Quavo? Like you know, you have you like a woman who you allegedly violated. To the point where she had to go get a restraining order granted to have some sense of protection from you. You were still down making songs, girl, arguing, fussing, and fighting. Baby, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Girl, let it go in my Elsa voice. Girl.
These are some of the comments. Chris Brown dissing Quavo on his album. Chris Brown took a took wait. Chris Brown took a shot at Quavo before Drake responded to Kendrick Lamar. Excuse me. Chris Brown went hard in the in the diss to Quavo. Chris Brown dissing Quavo over a woman they both they they wait. Chris Brown dissing Quavo over a woman that they both ain't with is some wild stuff, right? Chris Brown dissing Quavo in the Migos on his deluxe album is hilarious. Chris Brown beefing over a woman who he put his hands on and had, she had to take a restraining order out over girl is crazy. Add that to the tweets. <laughs> Let me see what I tweeted. You know I tweeted. You know I tweeted something. Oh, let me see what I tweeted. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, here I go. Chris Brown is out here beefing with Quavo over a woman who he, A-B-U-S-E-D, she also had a five-year restraining order granted against him. Girl, what is going on? All right, so congratulations are in order for Miss Meg the Stallion. So this is according to um, the neighborhood talk. Y'all are here for it. Meg the Stallion teases she will uh, drop a tequila brand very soon. Um, what's next for the rapper? This is via Ad Week. What's next for the rapper turned superstar? Meg exclusively announced at S uh, SMW that she is working. Um, on her tequila brand, has a new album coming out, and will be on the road for her Hot Girl Summer Tour. The tour consists of 30, 32 shows across North America and Europe, spanning from May through July, with multiple shows already sold out. I create the things that I want to see, she said. I don't create things for other people to like them. I create the music I want to hear. I go and do my own things and stay true to me. Yes. Thoughts, neighbors? I'm happy for that. That's cute. One thing Meg gonna do is get to the bag. Girl, Meg either gonna have an endorsement deal with Planet Fitness. Girl, either was it Nike? Girl, she coming out with tequilas. Girl, she got her songs. She got her little number one under her belt, right? So shout out to Meg. I wouldn't mind having my own drink one day. I wouldn't. I think that would be so cute. I think that would be so cute to have for me to have a little, a little tequila and vodka because you know that's what I really drink. For me to have a little tequila and a little vodka. Oh, that would be so dope. Ugh. Not to put y'all in my business, but y'all, never mind. Y'all, I'm going to tell y'all, this is just one thing. Girl, y'all know I got that on my, uh, I have that on my vision board. Mm -hmm. I want my own, like, liquor line. <laughs> Not necessarily line, but like a tequila or a vodka would be really, really cute. <sighs> Maybe one day. <laughs> what else is going on? Baby. Now, this is what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> okay, so listen. I was over here minding my business, looking for people to talk about, right? <laughs> and I saw that Ari Lennox <laughs> girl had grabbed a hold of Joe Button and was swinging him every which way but loose. And so I'm like, what's going on? So I follow Ari. And this is what I initially saw. Um, Ari Lennox uploads video of Joe Budden getting punched in the head on her IG story 24 times. And the gag was she left it up. You know how sometimes when people, you know how sometimes, sometimes folks do the, the post and delete. No, 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 no. Ari posted and it stayed up there. <laughs> okay. Um, it's unclear what led to her calling, um, Joe Budden out, but fans are speculating he, uh, mentioned her on his latest podcast episode. <laughs> so I'm like, girl, what's going on? What is going on? No one. I didn't see it on the Neighborhood Talk, the Jasmine brand. Shade, I didn't see it. Maybe they posted it and I didn't see it. But I couldn't. They posted the, that Ari had posted the video of Joe getting popped, right? But no one could give an explanation of why she was swinging him every which way but loose. So I did a little digging, just a little, not, 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 not too much. And BET, I said, come on, good BET. BET, Ari 
Lennox claps back at Joe Budden on social media for mentioning her in combo about J. Cole's apology. The R&B songstress did not take too kindly to the podcaster name dropping her on the latest episode of the Joe Button podcast. So this is what they wrote. Ari Lennox has some time to set Joe Button straight on social media and she held no punches. Button mentioned her name while discussing J. Cole's apology to Kendrick Lamar for dissing him on 7-Minute Drill on the latest episode of the Joe Button podcast. At the 28-16 uh, mark of the episode, 28 minutes and 16 second mark of the episode, Button gave his take on the Cole versus Kendrick beef. I don't want to hear no more about that record, Button said. It sounded like he didn't mean it. His voice was trembling like he didn't mean it. His choice of words as one of the greatest lyricists says he didn't mean it. Um, I don't want to hear a effing peep out of Earthstone Twitter. Cole is on that. Y'all think I be playing with the Ari Lennox, Scotty. They be all, they they do all that earthy college campus grassroot-ish. But uh, continued, if you listen to J. Cole raps, he just been trying to be the best effing, the best rapper, the best MC. But it been, you gotta listen to the, the, the ninja story. It's been college life. Lennox took to her Instagram stories and shared a clip of Cap uh, of rapper Consequence punching Button during a Love and Hip Hop New York reunion taping from 2013, showing that she meant business. Lennox uploaded the same clip 24 times. <laughs> <laughs> That's my type of carrying on. Hello, girl. If you want to send a message, send it and make sure that they see it, girl. She wanted to make sure that the message got out. She wanted to make sure that Joe saw the message and she wanted to make sure everybody else saw it too. Okay. <laughs> she uploaded it 24 times in a row. She did. She did. I saw it with my own eyes. <laughs> this is what Ari had to say. Knock your little glasses off and everything. Keep my precious name out of your psychotic, animal abusing, women terrorizing, demonic trolling, nicotine and case mouth. All this meth smoke for a woman, but not for any man beating your ass in real life. Ball bitch. Yeah, it was a ball bitch. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it was the last two words for me. That's what took me. That's what took me clean out. I said, oh, God. Oh, heavens no. <laughs> the girls are fighting. Oh, God. Um, this isn't the first time that Lennox and Button have had words for each other. On an episode of his podcast earlier this year, the podcaster said he disagreed with Lennox for sharing her struggles as the opening act for Rod Wave's tour. Um, I just remember every show just racing to get off stage, racing to get through my set, the singer said on Instagram Live at the time. And then I found a wait, and then I found a spot where I was comfortable and I started trying to communicate with the audience. Then I realized they were getting angry at me, affirming them. I was like, okay, this is, you're getting angry that I'm affirming you. This is not my crowd. It'll, it'll never be, and that's, and that's all right. Um, later on the podcast, Button advised Linus to talk with her team instead of sharing her experiences on social media. Um, I don't know what Joe Button's obsession is with me, but what I will say is that somebody needs to tell him to stop touching them dogs. Oh, God. He's weird and he's growth and he has smoke mouth. He's disgusting and he's a failure, like Drake said. <laughs> now, Drake said. Now, Drake also said in my Nini voice, so what I got to do with this? <laughs> okay. Oh! Everything I do, there's a million people to talk about in life. Like, I can never just express what's going on with me without him coming from behind the landfill that he lives in to say something. Um, and I do, and I, and I do not know why he's disgusting. And I know in my heart his breath sinks. Maybe I. <laughs> <laughs> I did not be said all this. Oh girl, I would be low key reading. <laughs> Ari is a reader, okay? Ari is a reader, baby. Maybe I should sue him. Is that what I have to do? Like get on my Cardi B ish and spin the bread to shut his mouth to shut his smoke mouth up. 
<sighs> Eventually, Button gave what some called a heart, a half-hearted apology on another episode of the show. Um, in an industry that has historically not been great to women, now is the time for any woman out there. Now is not the time for any woman out there to feel like they're under attack, unheard or not seen. And if I've ever added to that, I want to do my best to change the trajectory. He went on to accuse Lennox of attempting to demean and defame a black man um, while summoning the powers universally of black women and later calling her a bag of fucking mixed nuts. <laughs> this itch is all the nuts combined. And I think she's done a great job of proving the exact point that I was trying to make in the latest broadcast. And we shower and we shower her with love. Girl, that's a mess. Oh, this is a mess. Anyways, girl, that's the Joe Budden and Ari Lennox beef, okay? All right, y'all. That's all I had. I'll talk to y'all later. Have a good day. Bye, y'all.